Nowadays, there's a large amount of information delivered every day. Communication systems deliver this information to help push forward human civilization. In some severe environments, delivering information efficiently is especially important. Local people rely on communication systems to secure their personal safety. For example, people in polar regions listen to the radio to confirm weather conditions such as snowstorms. In these regions, microwave communication systems play an important role. A lot of information is delivered by microwave communication systems in the Arctic. Microwave communication systems work through emitters and receivers. First, emitters on one side emit signals to satellites through the atmosphere. Then, these satellites relay the signals to receivers, also through the atmosphere. Finally, these receivers on the other side receive the signals. However, microwave communication systems in polar regions can lose efficiency quite easily. This is mainly because when a sun flare occurs, short wavelength radiation is produced and high energy ions and electrons are also generated. Then this short wavelength radiation, high energy ions and electrons will travel towards the Earth. Most short wavelength radiation, high energy ions and electrons are blocked by the Van Allen radiation belt and can't pass through the atmosphere. But some of them do still make it through and gather around the polar regions due to the Earth's magnetic field. When short wavelength radiation, high energy ions and electrons enter the ionosphere, they change the concentration of the ionosphere's electron density. This makes the microwave signals deviate from their original path so that the receivers cannot accurately receive the microwave signals. To solve the problems caused by sun flares, our research group has come up with a promising solution, a high-speed terahertz communication system. Terahertz communication systems cover the 0.3 to 3 terahertz frequency range. 1 terahertz is equal to 10 to the power of 12 hertz. Recently, terahertz technology has proven to be quite promising. It can be applied to many fields, such as high-speed communication systems, security, the biomedical industry, and the food industry. There are three main reasons why our research group chose to use a terahertz system. First, these systems don't rely on satellites, which means that even if a sun flare changes the concentration of electron density in the ionosphere, it will have no effect on the generation of terahertz waves. Second, the frequency of a terahertz wave is much higher than a microwave, so we can send data signals at a much higher rate with a terahertz communication system. And third, although terahertz waves are absorbed by water and water vapor, there is less water and water vapor in polar regions, making them optimal locations for terahertz communication systems. This is because temperatures in polar regions are very low and water cannot evaporate easily. Also, the lower temperatures contribute to lower saturated vapor pressures, and so there is less water vapor per any given unit of volume. But so far, there has been no mass production of low-cost, high-power terahertz sources. If the power of a terahertz source is not high enough, it is difficult to deliver signals efficiently. The research group has come up with a solution that uses many small antennas to form a dense antenna network. Because the signals can be delivered from one of these small antennas to another, the problem of low power can be solved. With this method, terahertz communication systems can avoid the interference caused by sun flares and offer a much higher signal transmission speed. All this results in people living in polar regions being able to enjoy a fantastic high-speed terahertz communication system.